Welcome to our video on what sugar really does inside your body. We all know that excess sugar consumption can lead to some serious health problems. But were you aware that the average adult consumes over double the recommended daily sugar limit? And did you know that there are actually many different types of sugar? Well, here's the rub. Your body requires sugar. It's all about where you get it and how much you eat. So, which sugar is actually good for you? And what types are detrimental to your health? Diabetes Smarts is investigating the effects of sugar on the human body so that you can get a clear understanding of how sugar works once consumed. Like, subscribe, and stay tuned to the end of this video to learn exactly how much sugar is considered to be too much. Now, it's time to get into today's sweet topic. What sugar really does inside your body. Is it actually that bad for diabetics? Sugar is a type of carbohydrate, a main source of fuel that powers our bodies. As the name suggests, carbohydrates are made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It's important to understand that not all sugar is built the same way, and chances are, when you think of sugar, you are actually picturing one specific, extra unhealthy type. What is it? Well, let's break down. The different types of sugar. At the coffee shop or at home, you may find yourself reaching for sucrose. Sucrose is highly refined, derived from either sugarcane or sugar beets. Sucrose is a simple sugar, but it is actually equal parts glucose and fructose, other types of carbohydrates that we'll get into in just a moment. Simple sugars are either monosaccharides or disaccharides meaning they are composed of either one or two units of sugar at the molecular level. Sucrose is commonly used in mass-produced food products, like prepackaged baked goods, candies, and even sodas. Glucose is a monosaccharide, and it is found naturally in a variety of foods, including honey and certain fruits. But it is also widely used in different types of packaged foods, including sports and energy drinks. Most food you eat is broken down into glucose inside your digestive system and then sent through your bloodstream to be used as fuel for your muscle cells. This is why doctors look at your blood glucose levels to determine your diabetes status. Galactose is another monosaccharide and it is similar in structure and taste to glucose. But galactose is not typically found on its own in natural foods. However, it is usually part of more complex carbohydrates, including lactose, or milk sugar. This disaccharide, composed of glucose and galactose, is naturally present in milk and dairy products. Maltose, or malt sugar, is another disaccharide, and you can find it in certain grains, like barley. As the name suggests, maltose is used to brew malted beverages. Fructose, or fruit sugar, is another sugar commonly used in the production of certain beverages, though it is naturally found in fruits. This monosaccharide is quickly broken down and absorbed by the body. Fructose is sweeter in taste than glucose, which should clue you in as to why it is used in the production of high fructose corn syrup. While this sugar is made from natural sugar, don't be fooled. HFCS is not natural to our world. When certain enzymes are added to cornstarch, a glucose syrup is created and then further processed in order to turn a portion of its glucose into fructose. High fructose corn syrup can lead to a particularly fast and steep rise in blood sugar. That's why beverages with HFCS, like sodas, juices, and energy drinks, are associated with blood sugar spikes and an increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So what exactly do all these types of sugar actually do once inside your body? The answer is just ahead. First, what's the difference between simple sugars and complex sugars? Well, since they are rapidly broken down and digested inside the body, simple sugars offer a quick release of energy. That may be great if you are in the middle of playing an intense sport, but if you're just sitting on the couch consuming cookies, or crackers or soft drinks, you will surely experience a sizable rise in your glucose levels within an hour. Liquid sugar can cause a blood sugar spike within 15 to 30 minutes. These products give you those sugar rush feelings, but then they will be followed by a steep sugar crash. 
This can make you feel exhausted while increasing your cravings for more sugary foods. Simple sugar foods offer little to no nutritional value because they are highly processed and have most of their fiber, vitamins, and minerals stripped away before they hit store shelves. Complex sugars, otherwise known as complex carbohydrates, are a different story. Natural sources of carbohydrates, like whole grains and vegetables, contain polysaccharides, or long chains of sugar molecules. As the name suggests, their more complex structure automatically slows the body's ability to break these long chains down into glucose. Therefore, they will lead to a more gradual and less steep rise in your blood sugar than simple sugars. You can gain complex sugars from whole grains, vegetables, whole fruits, nuts and seeds, and even from some meats. Luckily, these natural foods also give you digestion-slowing fiber anti-inflammatory antioxidants, heart-aiding unsaturated fats, and insulin sensitivity improving protein. How does simple sugar wreak absolute havoc on all corners of your body? We'll investigate the true destructive power of simple sugar in just a sec. First, what do complex sugars do to your body? Well, if you regularly consume your sugar in the form of complex carbohydrates, from foods like black beans, beets, carrots, sweet potatoes, Greek yogurt, even eggs and fish, your body will process the glucose slowly, reducing the risk of a blood sugar spike. These foods also supply powerful, disease-fighting, inflammation-lowering antioxidants, along with blood sugar-stabilizing fiber, heart-healthy fats, and digestion-slowing protein. In fact, studies show that consuming foods with complex carbohydrates can help to improve your long-term insulin sensitivity, which makes your body even more efficient at using your glucose. So what's the flip side? How do simple sugars interact with your body? You may also be wondering, exactly how much sugar is too much sugar? We'll let you know what the experts are saying later in this video, but now it's time to investigate how simple sugars damage your body. First, how does sugar affect your insulin sensitivity? Well, consuming high amounts of sugar, especially simple sugars, can overload your pancreas, forcing it to release extra insulin in an effort to move that excess sugar out of your bloodstream. Over time, this can cause insulin receptors on the surface of cells to become desensitized to insulin, effectively heightening your insulin resistance. Plus, high sugar intake can lead to inflammatory oxidative stress which may further contribute to a decrease in insulin sensitivity. Sugar's inflammatory effects can also have serious consequences for your mental health. So how does sugar affect your brain? High sugar in your system causes your pancreas to release high levels of insulin, and high insulin in your bloodstream can affect the brain by stimulating feelings of hunger and cravings for sugar-rich foods. So too much sugar can lead to more sugar. Erratic glucose levels have been shown to interfere with dopamine signaling, which can cause fluctuations in mood. And multiple studies have shown a link between high added sugar intake and the risk of developing depression. Meanwhile, when brain cells cannot properly respond to insulin, it can increase the risk of cognitive decline and certain neurological disorders and neurodegenerative diseases, including Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and diabetes-related neuropathy. Which brings us to the question, how does sugar affect your nervous system? Sugar can disrupt the balance of neurotransmitters, the chemical messengers which transfer signals between neurons. Over time, this can damage nerves, leading to diabetic neuropathy. Neuropathy can cause feelings of tingling, numbness, burning sensations, or even nerve pain. And it can lead to serious complications for your hands and feet. We'll get to those in a sec. Meanwhile, sugar also affects the brain and nervous system by blocking leptin, the hormone responsible for signaling feelings of fullness. This can lead you to overeat or even binge on more sugar-rich, high-fat foods. Naturally, or, well, unnaturally, this can cause you to gain weight. So how does sugar affect your fat storage? Increased insulin resistance is linked to a buildup of intramyocellular fat, 
or fat that is stored in muscle cells. Eating more sugar can cause you to store more sugar as fat within muscle tissue, which interferes with normal insulin signaling pathways used to facilitate the uptake of glucose by cells, which in turn can lead to increased insulin resistance and increased weight gain. As your body becomes less efficient at utilizing its blood sugar, the extra glucose not used for energy becomes stored as abdominal fat. Fructose specifically is metabolized in the liver, and excess fructose may end up becoming stored as liver fat, a major risk factor for developing non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. High fructose intake has also been associated with the development of hypertension or high blood pressure. So that begs the question, how does sugar affect your cardiovascular system? Consuming high amounts of simple sugar can increase levels of pro-inflammatory markers, which can lead to atherosclerosis, or the buildup of arterial plaque. This narrows blood vessels, compromising blood flow, and it raises the risk of developing high blood pressure. In fact, studies show a significant association between sugar-sweetened beverage consumption and elevated blood pressure. Excessive sugar consumption has also been found to increase triglyceride levels while decreasing levels of heart-helping HDL cholesterol. This can heighten the risk of developing dyslipidemia, or abnormally elevated blood fat levels. In turn, this raises the risk of further cardiovascular damage. How does sugar affect your limbs? The inflammation caused by a high sugar intake has been linked to the development of painful arthritis in hands and feet. And as excess sugar can impair blood circulation, it can also lead to peripheral artery disease, a condition where blood flow to limbs becomes reduced. This can increase pain, numbness, and tissue damage in arms and legs. Meanwhile, as excess glucose over time can lead to diabetic neuropathy, it can affect your extremities by causing those unwanted sensations of tingling, pain, or burning. Unaddressed nerve damage and reduced blood flow to legs and arms can also create conditions for infections to spread. In some cases, this may require an amputation. In fact, new research estimates that in today's modern age of simple sugars, a limb is amputated every 30 seconds, and 85% of those amputations are due to diabetic foot ulcers. Unfortunately, the damage of sugar doesn't end there. Research has proven that maintaining a high sugar intake can also lead to an increased risk of certain forms of cancer, an increased risk of tooth erosion and dental issues, an increased risk of damage to the liver, the pancreas, and the gut microbiome, and even an increased risk of developing acne and other skin conditions. But don't forget, that you need at least some amount of sugar each day. So, how much sugar should you consume daily? If you stick with appropriate portions of whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seafood, you should have no problem with your sugar intake. What you really should watch out for is that added sugar intake. The American Heart Association recommends that women consume no more than six teaspoons of added sugar per day. That comes out to 100 calories. Men should keep their added sugar intake under 9 teaspoons per day. That's about 150 calories. So what does this look like in reality? Well, if a male consumes just one 12-ounce can of soda, that will take him to the edge of his daily added sugar allotment. If a female consumes that same amount of soda, she will have gone over her recommended daily intake of added sugar. Therefore, actively cut back on products with high fructose corn syrup, brown sugar, fruit juice concentrates, malt sugar, molasses, and even honey. And here's a major tip. Cut way back on your soft drink consumption. Studies show that, on average, adults get around 40% of their added sugars from sodas and sugary energy or sports drinks. Other common places people tend to get their added sugar from include grain-based desserts, dairy desserts, candy, and cereals. If you can reduce your intake of these foods, you will dramatically reduce your intake of those damaging added sugars.